Hi, and welcome back to more graph theory. In this video, we'll take a look at the Cartesian product of two graphs. So as usual, let's go to the blackboard. Before we talk about the Cartesian product of graphs, let's recall that the Cartesian product of two sets, A and B, is denoted A cross B, and it's equal to the set of all ordered pairs, little a, little b, where little a is an element of the set A and little b is an element of the set B. As a little example, let's take our set A to have elements x and y, and our set B to have elements 1, 2, and 3. Then the Cartesian product of A with B is equal to the set which has all of these ordered pairs, x with 1, x with 2, and x with 3, and then y with 1, y with 2, and y with 3. So that should be fairly straightforward. Actually, an example that I expect many of you to be familiar with is the Euclidean plane. You may not have thought about it, but the Euclidean plane is indeed the Cartesian product of two sets. Those sets just happen to be the real numbers. The Euclidean plane is just the real numbers Cartesian product with the real numbers. Note that capital R written like this denotes the set of real numbers. And we normally think of the Euclidean plane as having an x-axis and a y-axis. And any point x, y can be any point on that plane where x is a real number and y is a real number. So also a nice thing to remember here is that the set of real numbers in, is an infinite set. Which means that when you take the Cartesian product of sets, those sets could be finite or infinite. Great! So we've reviewed what it is to have a Cartesian product of two sets. So now you must be wondering, how do you take the Cartesian product of two graphs? Let's find out. Suppose that G and H are graphs, where the vertex set of G is the set U1, U2 up to Um, and the vertex set of H is V1, V2 up to Vn. So notice that these two graphs can have different numbers of vertices. Then the Cartesian product of G with H is the graph which has vertex set given by the Cartesian product of the two vertex sets. And we know what that is. That's equal to the set of all u sub i comma v sub j, where u i is a vertex of the graph g and v j is a vertex of the graph h. Now e is an edge of this new graph if and only if e is equal to the edge between vertex u i v j and vertex u k v l, where either one of the following holds. One, that i equals k and vj vl is an edge of the graph h, or two, that j equals l and ui uk is an edge of the graph g. Okay, well the formal definition may look a little bit long and technical, so we'll start with a simple example. We'll take a look at the Cartesian product of the complete graph on two vertices with the path on four vertices. So let's try it. So in this example, we're taking a look at the Cartesian product of K2 and P4. Let's say that we've labeled K2 with vertices X and Y, and we've labeled P4 with vertices A, B, C, and D, like this. So let's start by writing down the vertices of our new graph. And so we'll write down all of the ordered pairs, XA, XB, XC, and XD, as well as YA, YB, YC, and YD. Great. Now we have all eight vertices written down, and we have to think about where the edges go in. Now let's think about the edges in this new graph, which happen because of the graph G. So this is where we have the second component of the vertex label fixed. In other words, if you take a look at vertex XA and YA, we know that those have to be adjacent in the product because X and Y are adjacent in our graph G, which is K2. Similarly, we fill in these other three green edges. Now let's take a look at the edges that happen because of the graph H, which is P4 in our example. Here what we want to do is take a look at where the first component of our vertex label is fixed, for example, XA and XB, and since A and B are adjacent in the graph H, we put an edge in the product, and we get these edges in red as well as these edges in red on the bottom. As you can see, Cartesian products of graphs are pretty fun. Let's take a look at an example with a few more edges. So in this example, we have the Cartesian product of K4 with K3. Let's say that we label K4 with vertices X, Y, Z, and W. 
and let's give vertex labels A, B, and C to our K3. Now, what we want to do is draw out all of the vertices of our new graph, which is the Cartesian product. And instead of writing out vertices as ordered pairs, I'm just going to use a shorthand where XA really denotes the ordered pair X comma A. So now we have all of our vertices and we need to figure out the edges. So let's take a look first at the edges that correspond to K4. Those ones are going to occur where we have the second component of our vertex label fixed. So if we take a look at everywhere where the second component is A, we can put in all of the edges that correspond to our K4, which means we should have XA adjacent to YA, etc. And we get this little complete graph on four vertices here. Similarly, for these other two pieces, we get another copy of K4 and again. Now we have to take a look at the edges which happen due to K3. So those edges will occur if the first component of our vertex label is fixed. So let's take a look at fixing the first component to be equal to Y. Then we'll have YA, YB, YC all making a triangle and that's because A, B, and C are adjacent in our complete graph on three vertices. Similarly, if we fix the first component of the label to be Z, then we'll have this next triangle occur in our product. And if we fix our first component to be X, we'll have this purple triangle. And finally, if we fix our first component to be W, we get this red triangle. And that completes all of the edges in our product. Using the Cartesian product of graphs, we actually can define a very well-known type of graph. And it's called the hypercube, or n-cube, denoted Qn. And it's equal to the Cartesian product of K2 with K2 with K2, keep going n times. So in other words, Q1 is just K2, and Qn is equal to Qn minus 1 Cartesian product with K2. To get a feeling for this, let's take a look at a couple of small examples. So obviously Q1 is easy, that's just K2. Now if you look at Q2, you have to take K2 and Cartesian product it with K2. You're going to end up with this 4 cycle. Next, if you look at Q3, we take two copies of Q2 and we make the Cartesian product as we normally would with K2. We end up with what looks exactly like our normal three-dimensional cube. As we've noticed, Q3 is just our usual cube in three dimensions. Now in mathematics, we are not limited to just three dimensions. We can have an n cube for any positive integer n. There's no limitation there. Also, it turns out that a Hamilton path in an appropriately labeled hypercube is equivalent to something called a gray code, which is used in computer science, for example, in encryption or error correction. And if you'd like to learn more about gray codes, just click here or see the links in the description below for a video about them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.